Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Shaver. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1946 for a Pine Thomas production, Big Town. This was later released to television under the name Guilty Assignment. Big Town debuted as a radio drama in 1937 and used sensationalized headlines of the day and fictionalized a radio drama around them. It was very popular and for a while it was second in popularity only to the Jack Benny program of every radio program in America. Pine Thomas brought Big Town to the screen with a four movie series. Tonight's movie is the very first of those four. Big Town was also a TV show from 1950 through 1954, and it was a comic book from 1951 through 1958. Big Town was a big deal back in the day. All four of the Big Town movies star Philip Reed as a newspaper editor and Hilary Brooke as his girlfriend and star reporter. Philip Reed was born in 1908 in New York City. He began as a stage actor and did radio dramas before moving into a long career in the movies. He died in 1996 at age 88. His co-star tonight is Hilary Brooke. She was born in upstate New York in 1914. She graduated from Columbia University and began working as a model. As so often happens, a beautiful woman in a modeling career ends up in the movies and she immediately began using a slight English accent to separate herself from equally beautiful and equally talented, act talented actresses. Soon producers were asking for that actress with the English accent. When her movie career ended, she became a regular on TV shows. She was on My Little Margie and The Abbott and Costello Show. She died in 1999 at age 84. Let's return to 1946. Enjoy Big Town. This was a dark room. Dark? Well, Will Erskine. <laughs> How are you, Will? Why don't you tell me you were aboard? How was I to know you were on this train, you fugitive from a deadline? You should be in New York, blackening the reputations of the citizens. Yeah, and you should be in Chicago writing advertising jingles. Oh, no, I've turned honest. Singing commercials, that's my new racket. Well, in that case, I should look forward to television with even less enthusiasm. Yeah, well, what about your paper? Did you um, libel the wrong guy? In the lexicon of Steve Wilson, there's no such word as libel. A publisher named Peabody took over a newspaper in Big Town, the Illustrated Press. Then he got on the phone and started making me offers. After the fifth, I gave in. The Illustrated Press must be in a bad way, Stephen. I don't know. I didn't ask. So they sent for the news doctor, huh? Transfusions of stud horse headlines. All the news that's fit to print, and a lot of it that isn't. Did it happen? Of course not. So? Mr. Wilson makes it happen. Why, I never faked a story in my life. No, you don't have to. News follows you around like a lovelorn spinster. Stephen, strand you on a desert island. The Queen Mary would run aground right under your nose. <laughs> Put you up on a mountain top. <laughs> Will you? Here, wait a second. 
Yeah, that's what I said. City editor, Illustrated Press, Big Town. Collect. Tell him it's Steve Wilson. I told him. He never heard of Steve Wilson. You pay for that call. It won't be so tough, son. All right, never mind it, Collect. Just put the call through. Don't get in an uproar. I always shave. Has one of your trains got wrecked? Run two trains in the same track and you're headed for trouble, son. Uh, you want I should lend you a shirt? No, thanks. Have a time. I got one in the bag. Here's your party. Hello? Hello, City Desk? This is Steve Wilson. Can you hear me? I hear you very well, sir. Oh, well, listen to this. The Big Town Limited just plowed into a freight. Well, thanks for calling. Associated Press will undoubtedly cover it for us. Of course they will, but... Yeah, I know. Th yeah, awfully thoughtful of them. Pictures, do you understand? I'm staying here to get a color story. I'll be on the hospital train tomorrow. Hello, 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 hello. That will be three dollars and twenty cents. Well, how do you like that? Like all the shade, it don't do no good to get in an uproar. Extra, extra, read all about the big train wreck. Get your paper here. Extra, extra, read all about the big train wreck. Paper, son. Yes, sir. Now, this is the Chronicle. Sure, it's the Chronicle. I want the Illustrated Press. Help yourself. Chronicle, read all about the big train wreck in the Chronicle. Extra, extra. Anything I can do for you, sir? Please, quiet. June 1928. Well, we go by the Gregorian calendar here. You'll find the sundial on the roof. <laughs> Is it that bad? What's bad about it? Peace. It's wonderful. It was. Hold on to your hats. Well? My pictures. Where are they? What pictures? The pictures of the train wreck I sent in. Oh, you want them back. I want them in the paper. But we don't. They're too gruesome. I'm awfully sorry. So am I. Now we'll have to replay it. Tell the makeup editor to draw up a new dummy with an eight-column banner. Well, on that one, six columns on the front page. Put the others inside, full page. My dear sir, just who do you think's running this paper? The new managing editor. And I'm it. So get the staff in here in 20 minutes. Mr. Peabody, this is Mr. Wilson, your new editor. Mr. Wilson, Mr. Peabody, the publisher. How do you do, sir? Glad you're here, Wilson. And perhaps you'd like to take a look at this. Thanks. Wasting no time either, I see. It has okay. the spirit. Go right ahead. Don't let me interrupt. This paper's in the red. That's why I hired you. There's a daily circulation of 83,000, a Sunday circulation of 85,000. In a city of over a million. A small but distinguished public, Mr. Wilson. The Chronicle, on the other hand, has a weekday circulation of... 258,000, and Sunday, 340,000. Why? They've got a funny paper. Well, we'll get one, too. And we'll get a new calendar and a clock. We're going after circulation, Mr. Ryan. Pete Ryan. Mr. Ryan. And maybe we'll get some new talent, too. No, don't worry. I'm not firing anybody. I'm asking you to help me put out a newspaper, that's all. With advertising in it. Circulation brings advertising, Mr. Peabody. Now, I don't know who you are or what you do. I'm going on the assumption that you're all newspaper men and newspaper women. Mr. Post has given me a list. Laurel I. Kilburn, reporter. Miss Kilburn? I'm Miss Lovelace, the church editor, Mr. Wilson. Miss Kilburn is on vacation. She won't be back for two weeks. Well, I don't have to wait two weeks to talk to the rest of you. Now, starting today, we're going to make some changes. We're going after circulation. Now, here's the way we're going to do it. Lorelei, welcome home. Say, hey, what goes on around here? Change, Lorelei. Change. I don't like it. He's here. He's here. Arrived just after you went away. Such a brash young man. Hello, you're new here, aren't you? Yes. 
I'm one of the changes. Hello, darling. You look correct. Yes, now I know the meaning of the word bedlam. Hi, Renegade. Welcome home, Goldilocks. You always do wonderful things to me. I'd like it better if you didn't tell that to the waitresses. Still convinced that matrimony is a fate worse than death on the copy desk? But you didn't forget, by the look of things, you didn't have time. We ride the whirlwind. One on the front page. The man's not only dean of the state university, he's married. With three kids, we don't have to crucify him. We can bury the story. When the dean makes passes at a student, Mr. Harris, and the student sues him, we don't bury it. The lion's in there, and you might as well beard him. Oh, uh, don't forget to ask him about his circulation. Oh, that's too personal. Oh, I almost forgot. You were brought up on the press, so how could you know anything about circulation? Uh, one look back. Come in. Hello. Well, good morning. You wouldn't be looking for a job, would you? I have one, Mr. Wilson. I'm Lorelei Kilburn. Oh, Miss Kilburn. Well, sit down, sit down, please. Mr. Post must have hired you in the dark. Well, not exactly. I was running the college paper, and one day I covered a story for him. So, when I finished college, he put me to work. Then you've never worked for any other paper but the press? No, but... Oh, Mr. Wilson, you've done wonders in two weeks. It's, it's so different. It's vital. It's alive. Why, we've only started, Miss Kilburn. Do you know what the circulation is now? Over 100,000. Up 20 or 1,000 the last two weeks. Why are we going to set Big Town on fire? We're going to tear it apart and put it together again. Then you have ideas, too. Mm -hmm. I knew it. You build circulation for a reason. You mold a bright and shining weapon, a two-edged sword, and use it to fight greed and oppression. Don't you? Well, I, <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> do you really know Big Town? It's full of stories. Stories about good people, brave people. They're the ones I want to write about. I want to give them good government and playgrounds and parks. We can, can't we, Mr. Peabody? Yeah, oh, we... I think it's wonderful, Mr. Peabody. You're two-edged sword. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'd like to see this town of yours. How about tonight? It's a date. Fine. We'll have dinner. Goodbye, Mr. Wilson. Goodbye, Miss Kilburn. What's she talking about, good people, two-edged swords? Oh, you know how these young women are? Knights in shining armor, crusaders. Steve, you won't. Have I ever? Of course not. I want you to do a little favor for one of our advertisers. Sure. Post? Yes, Mr. Wilson? I understand the DA has a statement to make on the Sutton case. I'll have our city hall man check on it right away. Lots younger than I expected. Really? Who is young? Steve Wilson. Don't worry, he'll make you grow old plenty fast. I think he's wonderful. The bright and shining sword? Don't be a cynic. I'm a realist. So is Steve Wilson, hadn't you heard? I know, I know. I'm going to have dinner with him tonight. I'm going to take him on a tour of Big Town. What big teeth you have, Grandma. And don't forget to carry your two-edged sword on your little red cape, Goldilocks. He might turn out to be a wolf. That's Big Town. Pittsburgh and Chicago and Kansas City and New York. It's America. Rich, lavish, expensive. Gay, with a brittle, desperate gaiety. Cheap, evil, with its poor and its beaten and tragic side. Yet good and kind and strong and vital. There's material for your ideal newspaper. Take Big Town apart and show what makes it tick. Don't tell me it can't be done and don't tell me it isn't what people want to read. Because I know it is. We've been on a tour of Big Town. Need a drink. How about a stinger, Lorelei? Okay. Two stingers, please, Joe. New here? Well, not anymore. I even know where the reform school is and what we should do about it. <laughs> well, mind if I try it? Uh, newspaper man who can make a music. Go right ahead. A few more talents. But you understand, don't you, Steve? You see what a newspaper can do. Sure he sees. 
Ruining your health again? Hello, Lorelei. Hello, Pete. Hello, Pete. You understand, don't you, Mr. Wilson? Fight for the little people, huh? Teach them how to read without moving their lips or using their forefinger. Then they'll cancel their subscription to the press and take the Atlantic Monthly. <laughs> oh, Pete, stop being bitter. No, I'm too old to be bitter and too hungry to be a crusader. We see eye to eye, don't we, Mr. Wilson? That's right, you do. Still trying to live the front page, hiding murderers and desks and being objective about hangings. Ah, uh, but not our own. Oh, what's the use? A couple of ostriches with your heads in the sand. Oh, no. You see the light on his eyes? The head emerges from the sand. A two-edged sword held in the beak. Say it so, Mr. Wilson. Go on, reassure him. Tell her that first you get circulation. Then you get advertising. Then you hire a great staff. And then you launch the Crusades. Go on, tell her. You took the words right out of my mouth. I hope you mean that. Come on. We've got a deadline at 8 o'clock in the morning. Good night, Pete. Good night, Loella. Hello, Pete. Tomorrow, we put out a newspaper. But next week, we build a brave new world. There should be a space devoted to advertising revenue, too. It's much more important. Must all female corpses be blonde and beautiful? Must all getaway cars be big and black? I'm getting fed up with adjectives and short paragraphs. There's your answer. It's three months since the whirlwind struck. And already the men from the marketplace storm the walls with handfuls of gold for the advertising manager. Maybe the new comic section has something to do with it. Do those blue eyes find a chink in his shining armor? Or does our hysterical attitude toward love, crime, and disaster begin to fall? Give him time to sharpen his sword. Meanwhile, where's that color story about the dame who tried to knock off her husband by putting a rattlesnake in his bed? I wrote it. Oh. Yes? And Miss Kilburn. Miss Kilburn, Mr. Wilson. The farmer just phoned him a story about a calf that was born with a picture of Abraham Lincoln on his forehead. Oh, shut up. Hello, Lorelei. Good morning, Steve. Here, read this. It was buried on the state page of the Chronicle. I don't see a story in it for us. An unidentified girl found dead in the hotel room in the state capitol. Ah, but she's been identified. Secretary to State Senator Williams. Could be murder. But it says heart attack. Look. A girl is found dead in a hotel room. She isn't registered. It isn't her room. It isn't anybody's room, according to the hotel manager. Who is she? A state senator's secretary by the name of Mary Johansson. Mary Johansson? I know her. Yeah, I thought you might. Her mother lives here in Big Town. Fine old family. Couldn't be, why? My mother and Mrs. Johansson grew up together. I'm sorry, Lorelei. Oh, Steve, the poor woman. She hadn't anyone but Mary. Better take a run out to the house. Of course. You're not going to make a big story out of this. Well, we want to be covered just in case, so take the photographer along. Oh, no, no, I couldn't do that. This is a tough racket you're in, Lorelei. Sometimes you have to do things you don't want to do, but you do them because you're a reporter. No, I, I... Look at it this way. Mrs. Johansson knows you. It's going to be a lot easier for her to talk to you than to some stranger. I suppose it is. Now run along. Steve, mm -hmm. you won't go overboard on this, even if there is a story in it. I'm not entirely heartless. Of course you're not. Better get a picture of the girl if her mother has one. Oh. Don't worry, it's for the obituary. You wait out here, Harry. Don't you want me to get a picture of the place? Uh, no, uh, get over there out of sight. Okay. Does your mother know? Not yet. You'll tell her? Want her to come and stay with you? Yes. I can't be alone. People will call and I don't want to see them. And the phone will ring and I don't want to answer it. I tried to get her to come home. I knew something would happen. But it would have happened anyway, darling. Her heart. But there'll be talk. Because the senator was married and because she loved him, and because she didn't care who knew it. Oh, 
That was his room. She died. It'll be all right, darling. Oh, but it won't. The newspapers. Oh, Lorelei. You wouldn't. You're a reporter. No. I'm a friend. The papers in the Black Steve are the first time in ten years. Why, well, it's a gold mine. Well, in that case, I... uh, in a modest sort of way. <laughs> oh, hello, Miss Kilburn. I'll run along. No. Uh, I want you to hear this. We can't print that story, Steve. How's that? What story? Oh, I sent Miss Kilburn out to see Mrs. Johansson. You know, the mother of the girl, the state senator's secretary. Probably nothing to it. There's a story in it. If you want to break a woman's heart, there's a story in it. She thought I was a friend, and she cried, and... She told me things she shouldn't have told me. But it wasn't murder. Mary had a bad heart and she died. And just because she died in his room doesn't mean we have to say so, does it? Oh, go on, forget it. Let's say you went out there as a friend of the family. Go on home. Maybe you can do something to help. I don't want to go home. There's a circus opening this afternoon. How'd you like to cover it? I like that, Steve. Well, then get going. And don't start your story. Hi, Skinny, the circus is in town. He told me to forget it. He said I was right. Did he? And he said, there's a circus in town. Cover that and mm -hmm. don't. Start the story. Hi, Skinny. The circus is in town. Are you out of your mind? That senator's the Chronicles man. Think I let her cover it? Play a dirty trick like that? Why, she's a friend of the family. Send Pete in. Pete. Interview a baboon for me. Hello, Pete. I want you to cover the Johansson story. How'd you know? I was born with a call and second sight. My mother used to ride a broomstick. You want me to give it to work, sir? Huh? Yeah. With pictures? Yeah. Is he drunk? Nope. But he will be tonight. than he is. Want me to write it out? Sit down, Lorelei. Talking about my resignation because I'm quitting. All right, you feel that way about it? I feel that way about it. You keep away from newspapers. Yellow journals, you mean? Except a job in a bookstore. Because this isn't the first time a thing like this has happened and it won't be the last. You said you wouldn't print it. I said you needn't write it. So your trained seal wrote it. Pete's a newspaper man. And I'm not. You could be. I don't think you should, but you could be. I'll get another job. And it won't be in a bookstore or on a scandal sheet. Have you seen the Chronicle? They played the story down. Explain that, Mr. Wilson. The Chronicle supported the Senate in the last election. He was their man. What'd you expect? Decency. If you had gone out as Pete did cold, if you hadn't known Mrs. Johansson, you'd have written the story. You might not have liked it, but you'd have done it. It's like, well, covering an execution. You hate it. You do everything you can to duck it. But if that's your assignment, you go. Because I'm a newspaper man. I thought you said I wasn't. You come in here and quit. You accuse me of double-crossing you. What do you think I am? I send you out on a story. Because the woman turns out to be a friend, I let you off and lose an addition. What do I get? Insults, accusations. Ah, oh, go on over to the Chronicle. They can use you. They can use anybody I've nursed and pampered and babied. Bunch of ungrateful prima donnas, that's what I've got working for me. Go on, go on over there. I'm not looking for gratitude. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have blown my top. Good luck, Lorelei. If you want, I'll call the Chronicle and give you a pitch. I believe you would. Tell the cashier I said to give you two weeks, Sally. I beg your pardon. A bandit held up the Mercury Theater. He's cornered in a warehouse on Water Street, shooting it out to the police. Come on. What are you waiting for? Get on your horse. Take Pete and the photographer with you. Okay. Well, come on, come on, come on.
at him. Look at that guy shoot. Oh, don't worry, the Chronicle will buy a new one. Yeah! Have you given me two gas? It's in your car, Chief. Go and get it. This thing is ridiculous. But fun. Your reporters beat it. We like it here. That ain't no bandit. That's Buffalo Bill. Or a reasonable facsimile. I saw him. He's just a kid. Pete, wait. Found something. You certainly have found something. We found the lipstick, didn't we? Or did we? Of course we did. You wouldn't kid me, would you? That wasn't your lipstick. Yes? Send in Ryan to Miss Kilburn. Miss Kilburn? Ryan. That did it. Well, the tumble awaits. Have you any last requests before your head rolls into the basket? Don't be funny. We don't make mistakes and we don't fake stories. And I won't have cops telling me how to run a newspaper. Newspaper? <laughs> oh, Miss Gilbert, Mr. Ryan, you know Chief Berkeley. Hello, Chief. And Mr. Mika. Mr. Mika is a cashier of the Mercury Theater. Oh, it was a man. He had a gun. Would you be willing to tell that to a jury? Don't you bully him. Oh, she wore a hat down, had a coat over her chin. How could he tell whether she was male or female? Well, I know a man when I see one. How do you explain the lipstick? Miss Gilbert uses one, doesn't she? Are you accusing a member of my staff of trickery? Yes. Oh. Look, hey, Wilson. You've been riding high, white, and handsome since you hit Big Town. But that's over. You heard what Mika said? The bandit was a man. So get busy and print the truth. If you have any idea what the truth is. Did you hear that? A cop telling us off, accusing you and me of faking? Let me see your lipstick. Well, they are different. Of course they're different. You don't think that I... Well, at least that's something. I wish that guy Mika wasn't so positive. I don't care what Mika says. I'm sure the bandit was a woman. Well, I hope we can prove it here. Look at this. Citizens of Big Town, do you want truth or fiction? Well, how do you like that? If you want the truth, read the Chronicle. If you want fiction, if you want lies, if you want fakery, read the Illustrated Press. Why, they can't do that to me. Go on, it's getting good. This is a challenge, Mr. Wilson. You say the Mercury Theater Bandit was a woman. Prove it. So that's what they want. All right, well, prove it. But how? I don't know. All we have to do is find a dame that's handy with a shooting iron. All right, get on it then. Check the shooting galleries, check the theaters, check the booking offices. Find me a dame who could shoot like Annie. Hey. Right. 
Miss Leroy. Good night, Oscar. Not much of a house tonight. Then it is. Cap. Paid you in that joint. Come on, Vivian, why don't you confess? Don't call me a thief. That matches. Come on now. Come clean. We'll make it easy for you. We'll get you the best attorney in town. Why, we'll get you, uh. Why? We'll have them crying for you. You were the victim of your environment. Your father lived in saloons. No mother. You were an orphan tasting the dregs of life. No milk. Holes in your stockings. I wasn't an orphan and I didn't have holes in my stockings. Shut up, shut up. How are we going to keep you out of jail if you don't cooperate? Why should I go to jail? Feature stories. Pictures. The shack you lived in. It wasn't a shack. No heat. Rats. Great big rats. And the rusty bucket you carried the beer home in. Why, we'll go to town. No jury in the country would convict you by the time we got through. I'll sue you for kidnapping, libel, everything. Laura, I... You wanted a crusade. Well, here's your chance. The product of the slum, undernourished, brought up in the streets. The breakdown of modern civilization. Here he is, Steve. Where is he? There she is. There's your bandit. I'll sue you. Let that woman alone, you big bully. And you take your hands off me. The idea of saying you had the bandit. Dragging me out of bed to see this woman. You aren't in bed and the dame's worth looking at. She's no bandit. Why, I'd tell that to every judge in the country. See? Get me a lawyer, would you? Well, you'd better get yourself one, and you'd better get the best in town. Nice office. I think I'm going to enjoy the newspaper business. Game. That's what we call it in the trade. Hey, look. It's him! All right. Call your attorney. Start writing those stories. I stuck up the theater, and I stuck up a couple of bands. Hey, Vivian. But first, you're going to help me fix the Chronicle. Two of these. Two for a quarter. You're uh, new here, aren't you? Hey, here I am, boys. Oh, put your guns away. I left mine home. <laughs> See this, Joe? Hello, Lou. Well, Fletcher asked for it. He wrote an editorial calling Steve Wilson a faker and demanded proof. And Wilson gave it to him. Yeah, right in the Chronicle lobby. <laughs> Something? What was that? Why, you... Steve, Mr. Brooks! Next time there's a lady in the office, take your hat off. Now, oh, sit down. All right, start cheering. Made a fool out of me and got me fired. All right, cheer. You mean to say the Chronicle fired you on account of that story? What'd you expect? I didn't expect that, didn't I? Somebody had to take the rap and I was it. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. How much do they pay in the Chronicle? What do you care? Because I'm hiring you with a $25 raise. Take the desk opposite Mr. Post. We can use a guy around here that likes to fight. You mean it? Yep. I'm not going to say thank you, because at the moment I don't feel up to it. That guy's got what it takes. I like him. Never mind him. What about Vivian Leroy? You made promises. Are you going to keep them? Got her an attorney, the best in town. Those stories I was to write, remember? Environment, the rusty beer bucket, holes in her stocking. Come on, let's get out of here. Wait a minute, Steve. Vivian Leroy's in jail, I hope she stays there. You think I want female bandits to shoot cameras out of your hands roaming the streets? Come on, we're gonna celebrate. <laughs> I 
I gave you 20. This is only change to 10. You gave me a 10, chum. This is 20, I saw it. You're looking for trouble? No, I just want the right change, that's all. Hey, what's going on here? This guy tried to short change me. How about it? That cheap chisel's trying to pull a fast one. Why, you... Come on, Steve. Steve, come on. Right this way, gentlemen, win a valuable prize. Step right up, the biggest bargain in the park. What a dump. Short change artist. Dirt, filth, gambling. Something ought to be done about it. What's wrong with gambling? Uh, try your luck, lady. Let's try it. Ah, uh, don't be downcast, brother. Remember, one good one makes up for all the bad ones. A little to the right, sister. Uh-oh, you missed. Try your luck, brother. All right. There we are. And jolly good luck. A bullseye! And here's your prize. No, I'll take that one. No, you take this one. A bullseye first shot gives you first pig. Only when the bottle's light, standing up. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, wait, right give me that clock. Go away, boy, you bother me. Right Come this on, way, the walk. biggest bargain in the take park. Me. Three balls for a half. I tell you it all, I, things like this shouldn't exist. They do. This should belong to the city, a place for kids, a safe, clean place where they can have fun. Uh, anything for a dime. That's the trouble with this world. Let's change it. Tear all this down, plant trees and lawns, build a swimming pool and a playground. All of it free and all of it clean. We could do it, Steve. <laughs> I knew this would happen. Let me have your name. Mary Blake, 114 South Central. What's your name? Jim Parson, 2131 Fairview. Get going. The kid was standing up. That's a lie. What's your name? So it's you again. Come on. Oh. Get out. Stay out. And you too. Oh, I'll stay out all right. And so will the public. And when I get through, there won't be anything left to stay out of. Go on, beat it. Because I'm going to close this joint and keep it closed until they tear it down. And what are we waiting for? Check the receiving hospital files. Get the dope on every accident at the amusement park. Get affidavits from the people who saw it happen. We'll run a story a day for two weeks. Now get busy. Last feature story did it. He raised. So he gave us a byline instead of a raise. Ten dollars a week apiece, you skeptic. A ten dollar raise? Well, that calls for a celebration tonight. I have a date tonight, but we can do it tomorrow. Oh. I'm sorry, Pete. Steve asked for you first. Well, that's all right. Have fun. Hello, Mr. Peabody. Hello, Steve. This is George Ingram. How are you, sir? Sit down, sit down. Oh. So that's it, huh? Mr. Ingram is the owner of the Big Town Amusement Park. You admit it? It's one of my interests. Ever been inside the joint? You really won't know the place when we get through with it. That accident, Steve, it's been settled out of court. You want me to kill it, huh? Yes. Can't do it. Why, the place is a death trap. Not anymore, Mr. Wilson. We're remodeling. Yeah, I've heard that song before, too. How about our readers? We announce an expose and then drop it. You'll find something to take its place. I'm not worried about that. No, you're worried about Mr. Ingram because he's an advertiser. Now, just a minute, Steve. We're in the newspaper business and we're in it to make money. You've been doing a great job. You've built up our circulation and pulled us out of the rain. Yeah, I know all about that. Steve, we're not crusaders. You said that yourself. There's nothing to crusade about now. Okay, it's your paper. Thank you, Steve. Fletcher, come on in here. Say when. When? If 
Fletcher, here's to a free press. We're not running that amusement park expose, Mr. Fletcher. Got anything to take its place tomorrow? Well, there's a trunk murder. It's pretty cheap. Janitor knocks his wife off and beat it. Anything different about it? Six feet three, comped her with a rock. Get Pete on it right away. Well, wasn't it? Oh, boy. Oh, let's forget about newspapers tonight. I kicked the lid off the amusement park for you when you asked me to forget it. Let me see my story. Later, when you get home. Let's stop in the club. I want to show you something. I've been practicing. All right. Give it to me. No, no, let's have a couple of drinks first. Joe, two stingers. This is only the beginning, Steve. We go on from here. Yeah, listen to this, Curly Locks. Oh, no, you don't. Not until I've seen my handiwork. <laughs> That's the newspaper game, Lorelei. Your version of it. City desk. And not your city desk. This is Lorelei Kilburn. Is that offer you made me a while back still open? All right, I'll be in in the morning. I'm quitting, understand? in Riverford and we miss it. The correspondent out there slipped up. I just talked to him on the phone. Yeah, he would. Pete, come here. Better take a run out to Riverford. Ooh, the Chronicle certainly gives Miss Kilburn a big byline, doesn't it? Yeah, I see she doesn't scoop you this time. I shouldn't be shivers. Here's the setup. A girl by the name of Isabel Prentice was found around midnight last night, choked to death. Well, the Chronicle has all that. But they haven't got this. This is the second murder in that suburb within four months. Both women, both throttled. About two months ago in Lindbrough, that's about 10 miles from Riverford, another woman was killed in the same way. We hook them together. Well, we make a stab at it. Dip in the petty cash box and extract a modest sum. For Wolfbane. For what? Wolfbane, for silver bullets. Or whatever anybody uses to catch a suburban vampire. Thank you. Oh, you better check the composing room. Tell them we'll need the big B. B as in vampire. Go ahead. I didn't kill her, I tell you. But you were with Miss Prentice the night of the murder. Weren't you, Crane? Yes, Mr. Masters. In the public library? I met her in the library. You'd never seen her before? No. I met her there and walked a little way with her, and then I went home. But I didn't kill her. Then how do you explain this? A library book charged out to you. Yesterday, we dug it from a pile of leaves near where Miss Prentice's body was found a week ago. Why was it there, Crane? I gave it to her that night. We were talking about it, and she said she wanted to read it, so, so I gave it to her. Well, that's how it happened. That's everything that happened. I, I went right home and went to bed. Well, my mother will tell you the truth. Poor kid, I hate this. I don't think he killed her. Think you can convince Mr. Wilson? Vance Crane was a mental patient until two months ago. Don't forget that. That's the sort of thing Mr. Wilson would like to hear. Mad vampire. The vampire line was mine. Mrs. Crane? Yes? We're reporters. 
Come in. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Vance didn't kill her. We don't think so either. You mustn't worry, Mrs. Crane. Chief Masters is holding Vance, but if there's no more evidence uncovered, he said he'd let him go. Did he say that? Yes. And we'll do all we can to help. Three minutes two, nine. How long would you say it would take him to walk? In that case, he couldn't have killed her. The coroner said she was murdered about 9.30. Are you certain he was home around 9? Oh, yes. I heated some milk for him. You know, my son was very ill. He worked so hard at the university. And ever since he came home from the hospital, I've insisted that he go to bed early. Are you sure he didn't know the Prentice girl? No. I mean, I'm sure he didn't. And those other two murders, the one here and in Lenboro, was he home both those nights? Oh, yes, he was. I told Chief Masters that. Then there's nothing to worry about. I hope not. You'll have him back in no time, Mrs. Crane. Goodbye. You're... you're both so kind. Goodbye. Goodbye. Take it while it's hot. Lukewarm, you mean? The Crane kid's still in jail, isn't he? At the moment. On suspicion of murder. Are you displeased with me, old boy? You've turned judge and jury and found the kid not guilty. He isn't. He's still in jail. He's still accused of murder. If they turn him loose, we'll say so. Right now, I want a story. I'm writing you one. You aren't writing. You're bleeding all over the joint for Vance Crane and his mother. And how about the mental angle? That isn't in here. Vance Crane is released from a mental hospital. Women start getting murdered, and you skip it. A boy has a nervous breakdown from overwork, and you want me to say he's nuts, is that it? I want the news. All right, then write it. And keep on writing. And don't forget the Wilson motto. Never kick a man till he's down. To the last illusion. Let's grab a couple of shots of him. Okay. I'm glad it turned out this way, Vance. Thank you, Mr. Masters. Hold it, hold it. Thank you. We're releasing him for lack of evidence. And you can quote me. Hello, Chief. How are you? Uh oh. Do I hear the beating of the vampire's wing? Hello, Pete. Lorelei. Cigarette? No, thanks. How do you like working for the Chronicle? There goes your story. Does it? So take your little hammer and pull out the nails, Mr. Wilson. Suppose you wait a couple of days before you start gloating. Oh, come on. Leave us gloat. All together now, three gloats and a tiger for Mr. Wilson. You know, you should try that whimsical touch in your copy, Pete. Hmm, the Chronicle can use it. You think so? Oh, by the way, if I should turn up a story, you want me to cover it for you? No, thanks, old boy. We'll muddle through. Thanks, anyway. Well, I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Mr. Wilson. He's up to something. Yeah. And it isn't good. Come on. Thanks. 
sold him cigarettes that night in Lindborough. Yes, Miss Prentice visited him at the sanitarium. They applied for a marriage license, but didn't use it. Yes, I lied, but he didn't do it. Illustrated Press, Crane arrested again. Read about the vampire murders. Hello, Mr. Wilson. We'll get old-fashioned, will you, Joe? Coming up. What is this, a wait? You didn't get far, that's what you mean. Have a drink? We were just leaving. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You've been scooped before. You'll be scooped again. No reason for treating me like an orphan. You asked if this was a wake. Well, it is. For a woman named Mrs. Crane. Have you seen her? Have you talked to her? She lied, didn't she? Wouldn't you to help your son? No. You'd only lie to build circulation. And Vance Crane lied. He said he didn't know the Prentice girl. Yet only a year ago, he knew her well enough to try to marry her. Ah, oh, what's come over you two? I thought you were newspaper men. Suddenly, you're mewling sentimentalists. Is that sound I hear, the pricking of a conscience? Conscience? He can't even spell the word. Why should I have a conscience? Because I dug up and put Crane back where he belongs. Sure. But you've already tried and convicted him. Even if he's innocent, he hasn't got a chance. Well, drink up, old boy. Don't let us spoil your celebration. Come on, Lorelei. All right, all right. So I'm a heel. Because I put the finger on the killer, now there won't be any more vampire murders. Mr. Wilson, they just arrested a man named Allen for the vampire murders. What's that? They caught him in the park trying to kill a girl. He confessed. Are you sure? Well, there's no doubt about it. Are they releasing Vance Crane? Hold on a minute, and I'll check. Mac, are you turning the Crane kid loose? Yeah, I'm gonna get him right now. He's releasing him right now. You want me to hang around and talk to him? Vance! Hold on a minute. Well, Mac, what about him? Crane just hung himself. He just hanged himself in his cell. Well, what do you want me to do, Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson? Come on in. He never hurt anybody. He never did anyone harm. Oh, Mrs. Crane, get it over with. Stand up.
say it served him right. Go on, Pete. That isn't what I'd say. If I'd done what he did, I wouldn't have written this. I'd have found myself a high bridge and jumped off of it. Oh, Pete, you don't think that he... No, not him. What can we do? Me? I can't do anything. Not now. Maybe someday, if he gets another paper, I'll walk in and ask for my job back. Pick up my tab, will you, Pete? Sure. else I can do. Yes, there is. That's your city down there. You took a dying newspaper and built it up, made it big and powerful. Yes, and what did I do with that power? Abused it, killed a man. Steve, that's over and done with. No. Why did you have to howl me to death? Why didn't you take your paper and help people with it instead of hurting them? Steve. You were right, Lowell. I, I could have helped people in so many ways. Why don't you, Steve? Why don't you use the pen of those things? You mean that? That confession of yours, Steve. My name should have been there, too. I was as much to blame as you were. He means it, Steve. You bet I do. I'm going to take you up on that, Mr. Peabody. yesterday's news. Get this, Fletch. Dig out everything in the morgue on that slum expose. What? Too hot to handle? Not now. Yeah, doctor's report, infant's death tolling. And get a hold of Pete Ryan. Well, hire him back and put him on it. And we're gonna blast that slum apart and get those people some decent housing. Hastings Mystery Theater is produced for the local cable channel in Hastings, Michigan, USA. We are rated as one of the best 100 small towns in America, Hastings, Michigan. Look us up on the internet. Take a look at some of the reasons we are one of the best 100 small towns in America. And maybe you'll see why those of us who live here really like living in Hastings, Michigan. And also, continue to watch Hastings Mystery Theater here on YouTube. Post your comments, like, and subscribe. Thank you.